Welcome to Frostpunk, a new home, the main storyline of Frostpunk and a perfect start. Have you ever wondered what to build, how to build it, when to build it and what research to do? Well, I'm going to answer all of your questions in less than 25 minutes for the beginning of the game. Okay, so we want to fight the cold. Fairly obvious, there's snow everywhere. Humans don't really agree with cold weather, but that's the whole point of the game. Right, we've got some wood over here. What we're going to do is we are going to allocate 15 workers to it. Now, most people will do this for everything rather than ign and ignore the obvious, which is resources. So a gathering post. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to put it in a position where we are going to be able to access all three of these resource piles. Now, resource posts gather resources faster than people just going to a pile of debris and scavenging the resources from it so the next thing we're going to need is a road now do we want to just build it off to the side or do we want to expand that initial circle for our initial housing so we want to expand it for our initial housing then we want to do the path to the gathering post now bear in mind i have paused the game you also want to pause when you first start. So we are now accessing two piles of wood and one pile of steel. The next resource we need, of course, is coal. Now, we don't have enough yet to build another gathering post. So we need to collect some resources first. But we might as well allocate some people to start collecting coal, even though it is slower than having a second gathering post. Don't worry, we'll get to it. We will build a second one. And also, while the temperature isn't particularly low at the beginning, you might as well throw some extra people into some of the other resource piles. Feel free to choose your own. Uh, I tend to go for another additional wood pile because at the beginning of the game, absolutely everything needs wood. Okay, so our gathering post is finished. Let's allocate 10 people to it and we will now start gathering resources. So the next thing we're going to be thinking about is food, housing, research and medical facilities. But the first thing you start with is homes. Now we have 80 people. That means you want eight tents around the center of the steam tower. Okay, so the you basically need to build eight and you want to leave a gap for two medical facilities. Now, a lot of people say leave it for the first two days. Don't turn on the generator, da, 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 da. Why? I am going to show you that you will have way more than enough resources at the initial part of the game. And bear in mind, this is on the normal settings of the game. So this is medium difficulty. This is not on easy. I haven't reduced everything to make it ridiculously easy. This is on the medium settings. Now we can allocate some more people to another resource pile as well, because we still have some spare people and we do need to collect a lot more resources. So let's start throwing down a couple more. So we're out, gonna be out of wood again once we've built these two, but that is now five tents built, which will accommodate more than half of the people that are in our settlement at the moment. So not too bad. Now, what we will also do over the course of this video is of course cut footage. I will cut out the unnecessary floating between targets and objectives so that you get to see it in a much quicker stasis, but uh, just showing you this part as it is, and then we will start skipping forward. So that initial layout, you want eight sets of tents, which is your eight pe 80 people, and you're going to build one medical facility, not two. Just one to begin with, because one is more than plenty for the beginning of the game. And again, you want to save the resources so that you can keep moving on ahead of what the game even asks you to do so that you're ahead of the curve. Now, the next thing, of course, is uh, going to be the medical facility, but we don't have enough resources. It's the end of the day. Now, at the end of the day, everyone goes back to their tents. But what we also need, of course, is food. So we need a cookhouse and we need hunter's huts. First thing to build is the cookhouse, not the hunter's hut. So the cookhouse, once staffed, will convert our 100 raw rations into meals, which will feed our people. And by day three-ish, if you haven't done this, they will start getting hungry and you don't want that. So there we go. Our last tent is built and everyone now has accommodation and our hope is in a fairly good position. And we've got five people that are unemployed that aren't doing anything. Well, yes, of course, that's because we've saved those five engineers for our first medical post. Okay. 
So we've now skipped forwards and we want to build another gathering post and of course we want to build it near to these two piles of coal because we will then collect the coal quicker. But we want some path first and I always recommend building the path first, not plonking the building and then building the path, uh, which again some people do. Uh, the reason I say that is because you will position the buildings better if you build the road first. Whereas if you just plonk the building down, you might find it doesn't quite line up with where you want to put streets. So our second gathering post is in and our first medical treatment facility for anyone who is going to get sick. And of course they will because it is absolutely freezing cold. And in fact, in a couple of days, it's going to drop two temperature levels, which means it's going to go down to minus 40. Now, of course, we need a hunter's hut because we need to gather food. Now, two fit here. So what we can do is put two here and then three behind uh, later on in the game. So there will be a total of five in that grouping. And I tend to find that is about enough. So again, we have scoped through. We are moving uh, people off of the resource piles and into the gathering posts, which gives us more people to use for other tasks. So now we have 25 available. We can put fill one hunter's hut and heart, well, two thirds fill another one. Okay, open the book of laws. Now, when you run out of people, when everyone's employed, this pops up, just close it, because we will certainly not be going with child labor. You don't need it. You are much better with child shelters and then medical apprentices, which speed up the recovery of patients in a medical tent. And of course, that's your biggest concern because people do get sick and it's better than working with the uh, scientists. And the reason you'll see why, the engineers, once you've built two research facilities, which we will have done before the end of this episode, uh, your research speed is relatively fast anyway. And once you have four, your research is ridiculously fast to the point that you can have everything researched before the final storm at the end of the game and you are guaranteed to have a very successful playthrough. Now, you're in the position watching this where what you can do, so we're gonna put down our first work so workshop, which is where research is done, but first we're gonna to need to expand our road network around that first ring. There we go, and expand out. And the aim of this series will be that you can watch this first episode and get a very solid foundation for the game and then not watch the rest of the series. I mean, obviously, this is going to be the first episode to begin with, so it'll be the only episode to watch, and you may choose to not come back and watch the rest of the series. And that's why I'm going to put enough information in here for you that you can. So our first two workshops are built, and now the first thing you're going to want to research is heaters. Okay, only cost 10 wood, bang, off we go. We've got our spare engineers, and we now have both of those fully staffed. So we have two gathering posts, fully staffed, a uh, cookhouse, fully staffed, one medical post, fully staffed, two workshops, and two uh, hunter's huts, one fully staffed and one two thirds staffed. And that tends to be the best layout for this early part of the game, because as you can see, we're getting more coal than we're burning. So I'll just skip forwards again. Okay, we've got another notification. Family torn apart. Okay, so basically this is you want to build a beacon and it's something that you need to research. So they want to uh, go and find, the. she wants to go and find the rest of her family, understandably. So we can't build it yet. And of course, the reason we can't build it is because you need to research it. And if you go to exploration and industry, it is the first thing you research. So beacon costs 20 wood and 35 steel. Now, it's fine. You don't have to build it this yet. And in fact, I even advise against it because you will want to build it when I build it because that's the best position for resource management. Uh, now, what I'm doing is building a second path out to the second double coal piles so as soon as the first two run out we can build another gathering post and continue taking that easy access coal before we have to build a mine now the second thing you want to research is going to be see these you need you need a coal thumper faster gathering you also need steam hubs but go with coal thumper because what you can also do if you choose to 
is remove once those piles are gone you could put down a coal thumper again i will show you why not i mean at the end of the day you've got well over two thousand coal uh, i think about two and a half thousand coal in the piles that are around now we've researched heaters everything's good but look in less than a day the temperature is going to go down to minus 40 and you're going to see why researching those heaters was very worthwhile okay so food we've already done it so now that the generator hums and we've sorted out all those other initial conditions saying that we should do food well we've already done that now we have to go and find people from our convoy so that's building the uh, beacon so that we can send out a scout team which again needs five people to form a scout team and you then need to explore the uh, frost land but again I'm going to show you everything so don't worry we're going through this one step at a time and it will give you the best possible foundation for having a fantastic city by the end of the game and in fact let's skip again we're going to skip ahead so again speed up time but again we're also going to skip ahead the footage as well because at the moment not a lot's happening so around the edge you have your iron ore deposit you've got a coal deposit over here where you can build a couple of uh, coal mines and there is another coal deposit as well uh, there it is over there so you have a total of three coal mines that you can build inside uh, your city and there are frozen trees as well uh, for the wall drill for wood as you get into the late game but we certainly don't need to worry about that now what we do need to worry about is getting a sawmill researched so that we can um, get more wood so again always check your temperature overlays so we're turning on the heaters now for everything before we have the double temperature drop so we've got plenty of spare capacity there with the coal. So as you can see, we're still in the green. Uh, turn on the uh, workshops. Yep, we're still in the green. Okay, so our coal income is more than our coal expenditure. And that's how you want to try and keep it. You don't want to see red. Now, don't get me wrong. In extreme short-term circumstances, you can have red, and we will as this series progresses but you need to do it in a smart way so that you don't run out and everyone freezes to death okay so we're about to have this double temperature drop and the temperature you're going to see the edge of the screen here we go screen frost up i do love the graphics of this game in fact i absolutely love this game in general now look at how the temperature's changed because we've dropped to minus 40. now bear in mind this is before the work shift so as the work shift starts, you will find that all of the workplaces are actually still workable because we researched heaters before the first double drop. Now, if you hadn't, uh, the workplaces would have actually been fairly uh, cold. So they would have been below chilly. So below chilly is cold, and then below that you have uh, free, very cold, and then you have freezing. So if you look at the top bar, you can see the best conditions. Uh, obviously, the steam hub in the center of our city is always glowing red because that's where all the heat comes from and you want to try and keep it chilly at the lowest if you can uh, later in the game you can't avoid deadly freezing but as long as you've done everything correctly the game will progress nicely so the next thing we want is a sawmill because the wood piles that we are scavenging will run out and if you haven't thought about it beforehand and you run out of the initial wood piles and everything else uh, to put it bluntly you'll be screwed uh, so just be careful and in fact I also show you uh, well not in this episode but later on uh, what happens if you do overspend your resources when you haven't got anything coming in and you are in a position where you need to build additional path so additional streets and an additional sawmill uh, because you've forgotten about wood i thought i would highlight it in the series in a way that was recoverable uh, just to give you an idea of what happens if you don't think ahead okay coal pile depleted sawmill research so one of our coal piles has been depleted but we do now have a sawmill researched so we will get this put down and of course we need to connect that with uh, streets so we'll again connect with street you can either go all the way across or you can just go to the edge because 
as you put street down you can also demolish it to redesign the layout of your city so everything fits how you want it to now we've got 275 coal left which is more than we've currently got in reserve and we're still earning more than we're spending so that's the best position to be in so we'll let the sawmill get built and of course we want to move on to the next piece of research so now we might as well research the beacon so that is now put into our research queue and again I've skipped forwards so the sawmill is now built now we have no workers for it at the moment because everybody has a job we can't afford to take anyone from anywhere but of course we have that gathering post uh, that is currently uh, taking the last resources from those piles and this is your first um, job uh, that you want to do in the book of laws and it is child shelters so we've just selected child shelters that unlocks a new building which is a child shelter you know does exactly what it says on the tin basically and you're going to want to put in one because we have 15 children if you hover over the population in the bottom right hand corner it will give you a breakdown so there we go we've got 15 kids a child shelter takes 15 kids so everyone's in a shelter now that also gives you an additional hope boost so there we go children care for hope rises now as long as you always cater for all kids now let's have a look at our consumption oh that's a little bit red that's fine we will resolve that matter in the not too distant future okay beacon researched so again want to look at our next piece of research and you're going to want to go with hunting gear okay now fast gathering is one of those ones that you can pop down really quick but our, our people are gathering enough at the moment uh, that we don't need to be overly concerned uh, with what is coming in, as well as the fact that the next temperature uplift is less than a day away. So although we're burning ever so slightly more coal than we're now collecting, we will be able to turn off some of the heaters uh, when that temperature does indeed increase again. Now, where do we want to put it? Again, if your layout is, if you're going to match this layout exactly, and again, I'm saying you don't have to, uh, it's just really the main building layout and the process of doing it that you need to follow for the best start. The locations of which ones you do and where, that's really entirely up to you because there are multiple resource piles around the map and you're probably best looking at it strategically when you first pause the game when you first start. Okay, so as you can see, we need to turn on another heater but there are no staff in there yet but we have used uh, all of those resource piles so those resource piles now next to the uh, collection hut have finished oh here we go a note of thanks so back in london it was only the wealthy that didn't have to send their kids to work so we're creating a new world now that is a positive decision and throughout the course of the game, there are a lot of decisions which can have both positive and negative outcomes and unintended negative outcomes. So, Hunter's Gear has now been researched. Fantastic, lovely stuff. Again, we need to go on. There we go. And we're already, believe it or not, nearly 20 minutes in. So the coal piles have now been uh, depleted. We have no car, uh, coal and uh, the gathering post resources are fully depleted as well so we need to build another gathering post which we had just enough wood for by the way if you look at the top we only have two wood and five steel left so dismantle building we'll grab back some of those resources and again we'll get the sawmill underway because at the moment uh, we haven't even got enough to uh, research fast gathering because we don't have 10 wood. Right, that is building. And again, we have no, we still have 10 people working in here that we now need to switch over uh, to the sawmill. So we've put those to zero. Everyone will get these buildings constructed and we will have enough people to put another 10 people into the new gathering post. Okay, our beacon is built. Lovely stuff. Now, this is when the story really starts to kick off for the game once this is built. So, here we go. This is the deployment of our beacon. 
which allows us to explore Frostland and start getting additional people into our city. And this is where you have to start thinking more carefully how you do the layouts of the buildings, because you have to attribute outside of that initial steam circle and how you keep everyone warm. But we can't do it at the moment, so we've skipped forwards. Yep, we do indeed need a win, I completely agree and we will figure out a way of freeing up an additional five people so we can get that party created. So we have 10 people in the sawmill, they're collecting wood. Ideally we want to keep those. Now you'll notice the hunter's huts now have 10 and 10. So I have harvested five people from a hunter's hut. So we have them both at two thirds capacity now and we still have five human beings left. Well that's good. Now. Book of Laws, do we want to enable anything else yet? The answer to that is no, because you want the hope boost. So as you can see, discontent has started to rise quite a bit. Uh, now what we will do is we will skip forwards again. So the temperature's about to rise. There we go, starts getting a little bit warmer. Discontent straight away goes down. That's it, because the temperature's a bit nicer. Although what we do have, which I find interesting when the temperature goes up, is suddenly loads of people are sick. We have 11 people sick. And of course that means we are going to need to build our second medical hut. But we don't have the spare capacity or the engineers to do it at the moment. Now you could dismantle that building if you needed the resources, uh, but I would advise you not to because what you really want to do is put a coal thumper next to it and demolish the one that's near to the two coal piles on the other side. Or of course you could do it completely the other way around. Again, as I've said, there is a degree of flexibility into what you do, but see if coal thumper fits just there, if you wanted to put one, and that gathering hut would be able to collect it. Okay, so skip forwards again, and what we're gonna do, speed up time. And again, what we want to do is create our first squad. So we're still earning more coal than we're spending and we want to create some scouts because we've now got enough resources. Okay, so the first thing to do is go to the Lost Expedition. Uh, it doesn't take very long, it takes 10 hours. Uh, again, you can speed up time and just wait for them to come back again. But once they get to the destination, you will find out how many additional people are coming back into your city. Now, of course, what you need to do is start thinking about additional housing. So we now have a bit of wood, so let's build some additional tents. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna build a total of four, starting off the edge of the hunter's huts and build four all the way around. Uh, obviously not connected by path at the moment, that's fine. We wanna get the houses built over and above uh, putting the path in because we do have quite the shortage of wood. So, but now that we have it, we can put the street in. So there's three houses built. That is already enough, I think, for the first group of people. Uh, I can't remember the exact numbers specifically, um, but I think three is enough, but I always build four as a just in case, and it also reduces your future requirements. Now we've done faster gathering before we build the four, fourth house, because of course, getting additional people into the city, we're gonna need to provide additional heating, which means we need faster gathering at the gathering posts of the coal that is currently remaining. Now that does bring us nearly to the end of this first episode and a perfect start to Frostpunk. I do hope this is very helpful for you. I do pro hope it has provided insight into what to do at the beginning of the game. Here we go, they've got to the location, let's explore escort the survivors to the city. That is always the option that you choose as well, by the way. Don't send the survivors to the city, escort the survivors to the city. The temptation is to go and take your scouts and go and look for another location. And as you see, there is a total of 35 people. So we do need that fourth tent, the one that we've built. Okay, and that is it for this episode, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. If you've enjoyed this and it's helped, please subscribe Till next time, I'm Know It All Gaming.